All right, everyone, there's a good link in the description here, not archived because it's a video clip from Twitter, from uh, Posobiec, actually. Uh, Carrie Lake being asked if uh, she were tapped for a VP position by Donald Trump, if she would take it up, and she unequivocally says no. There were no weasel words involved, so you can actually take it to the bank. If she had said, well, no, I don't really intend to do that because I'm currently wanting to be the governor of Arizona, Okay, that means she's receptive. Clearly, she's not interested, although she talks to Trump uh, frequently. Somebody will clip that first part out and make it sound like she hates Trump or something. I guarantee that that'll happen. It happens all the time. In my opinion, uh, number one, Carrie Lake will win. Um, she's well ahead of her opponent. Katie Hobbs refuses to debate, is being out campaigned two to one as far as appearances. Katie Hobbs is not a particularly... Uh, powerful candidate. And Arizona, in my opinion, is beginning to move a little bit more red. It had been getting more swing statey or even leaning blue for years. I think that that has been reversed because of Bidenomics and the border crisis. Now, if she uh, becomes governor and does a reasonably good job, that is her in-party support, her in-state support remain relatively high. I would not be surprised to see Carrie Lake launch a presidential bid in the future. In fact, we might have found uh, DeSantis running mate. The, the dream matchup is Trump-Rand Paul 2024, and then Rand Paul takes up DeSantis and runs for two terms, and maybe then DeSantis runs with Carrie Lake, and then maybe she runs. You could have a massive four-president uh, four dynasty, potentially, uh, on the back of proper uh, ethos. If, if you have good populism going and people generally are doing well, and you have like a second nifty 50 sort of feel, you could end up with that sort of dynasty. And the Democrats right now, they're, they're short Hillary now. Um, Warren is off the wall. Bernie's too old. Biden's too old and crazy. Kamala Harris too unlikable. Uh, basically, they may have to default to Gavin Newsom, and that would be a shit show. With the Republicans, you see some new up-and-coming individuals who I think could potentially mount future presidential runs. Carrie Lake, in my opinion, based on the limited number of interactions she's had with other people, is definitely one of those individuals. She's already distinguished herself, in my opinion. She has an it factor, if that makes sense, that most politicians do not have. Like, Biden doesn't have it, for example. Um, you can only imagine him as the bumbling president, which is a prophecy fulfilled, by the way. I think, uh, what fucking year was it that I made my video on... Uh, looking at presidential candidates as though they were trying to get cast in the role as president, and whether you'd cast them at all, and if so, what kind of president they would be. Of course, I think that was the 2020 election. Uh, with regards to Carrie Lake, she reminds me a little bit of a female JFK or something like that. Um, she's got the biting wit. She's definitely well-spoken. And she's able to pivot around uh, when discussing an issue in order to both jab and say something that's more poignant a again i mean even like a trump doesn't do this trump just jabs the entire time uh with biden it's you know he either goes on an angry old man frenzy or he's just defending himself and saying no man i heard about it on cnn i had no clue this was going on we've seen that from obama as well who is right now getting his fluff pieces on which is hilarious um, look at her reaction when she's asked specifically, would you take up a VP position if asked to do so? No, I'm currently running for the governor of Arizona, and by the way, much to your chagrin, it'll be eight years, not four years, ha ha. By the way, I noticed that even though you don't, people don't like me, I answer your questions more than my opponent does. You're rolling quite a few messages into a fairly terse amount of time here. That kind of verbosity and rhetoric is very important within politics. If you're a good old boy politician from some non-competitive area, you can get by with being a schlub, by being a Chris Christie sort of character. Uh, his, his shining rhetorical moment was probably fed to him by the Trump campaign, and that was the Marco Roboto moment, which I thought was hilarious at the time, spawned a son and everything else. Uh, Carrie Lake does not suffer with that issue. In my opinion, she'll be a popular governor. She seems to have generally good ideas. I, I, I don't like the evangelo moralism of Lake and certain others rising up within the GOP, and I think that'll be a problem in years to come. Right now, it's something that I personally can give a pass to. We, we see this with Marjorie Taylor Greene, Jesus, Jesusing it up. Well, okay, you go ahead and do the Jesus, Jesus. You're pro-gun. That's good. 
you're standing against lockdownerism. That's very important right now. Uh, there are more pragmatic pressing, uh, pressing issues, uh, censorship and some of these other, the warmongering over Ukraine. Um, because of the plurality of issues not being Jesus, Jesus, I as a pagan, for instance, can overlook that. I would be willing to overlook that for Carrie Lake too, unless it became like a main platform issue. Uh, Trump did this, half-heartedly, of course, at multiple occasions. Mike Pence taking up more of the neocon, old evangelical 90s Republican line on that, actually. It's very funny that there are still people who want him to run and consider him to be a viable potential candidate. Carrie Lake, though, I think in the future would be, and there's another added advantage. She's from Arizona. Arizona is a swing state now. Having a uh, popular gubernatorial figure from a state that would otherwise be highly competitive is a very good launching point for a presidential campaign. It's something like, imagine Newsom runs. His candidacy, his incumbency is in California. California is spoken for. It's a democratic state. You, you would imagine some, a Republican running from a deep red state or a Democrat running from a far blue state doesn't really gain that early advantage that would be held by someone from a very competitive state, allowing them to campaign on native soil, where they've already got a huge constituency when they do go there, and number two, not needing as many resources to be poured into that state. It's simply not necessary. Everyone would already know who she was, Governor Kerry Lake. So you don't need to make a bunch of ads in a presidential campaign reminding people of who she is. They already know. They've been voting for her before. Uh, I have a feeling she's going to have a fairly distinguished uh, gubernatorial career. I think she'll generally do a fairly good job. And again, in part, it's just the it factor. It's the attitude. The attitude, the, the verbosity, the, the capability of using rhetoric, the capability of communication. A lot of politicians are subpar at this. Even some of the better speakers, they're only good speakers when they have a teleprompter in front of them. Sure, there are examples of people that speak off the cuff and do a good job. That being said, Carrie Lake appears to be one of them. She knows when she goes up to a gaggle of reporters, they're itching to write a hit piece about her. She knows this. They're from MSNBC and CNN and NBC News and all the other leftoid outlets. Someone from Vox is probably there trying to, trying to sniff her farts and shit like that. Now see how they smell. They write the next write-up. Oh, we think Carrie Lake's diet is atrocious. Clearly, she's not eating healthy food. Not too far hyperbolic, by the way, considering modern journalistic standards. Just saying. Uh, I, I think she'll win. I think she'll eventually launch a presidential bid. It won't be right now. I mean, she's not going to get in the running for 2024. She'll be too busy being governor. This is also why I think DeSantis sits it out. Um, and she is more MAGA, so, I, I mean, she's not going to step on Trump's toes. By the way, it's raining right now, and the cat uh, loves going out in the rain. For some reason, Farah finds that amazing. I've actually taken the watering can as a, as a joke and, like, watered the cat. She just sits there. She finds it fun. I don't understand. Maybe she's got some, uh, what is it, Turkish van in her. Uh, it's that cat that likes to swim that lives in uh, Anatolia which we're rating right now on Pixel Planet still, by the way. Keep it up. Uh, good progress overnight, Clankers. Uh, in my opinion, Carrie Lake would be in the top 10% for a future presidential run. Again, based on what I have seen. Now, of course, you could have a major scandal. You'd have a health issue. You, anything under the sun can happen between now and 2032 or thereabouts. I would not take my eye off of Carrie Lake, though. The same with DeSantis, Rand Paul, Ted Cruz will try, probably, again. I wouldn't vote for him or want him as president, but he might try. Uh, on the Democratic side, though, you don't really have a whole lot going on. J just to be clear, there are plenty of talented Republicans who are young enough to mount a presidential run in the next 20 or 30 years. Can the Democrats, other than Joe Kennedy and, and a very small handful of others, can you really say the same about them? They're talking about AOC wanting to run for the presidency. She did a fluff piece with GQ, by the way, actually, the other day, in which it was basically the, the me story of AOC. And it, it contrasts with Carrie Lake again, by the way. Uh, you see an entirely different tack when it comes to uh, campaigning. That's about all. Peace out.